And welcome to another edition of Trade Talk TV. Today we've got James Avery from Kevin in the office. James, how are you? Great. Happy James, to be here again. Great to see you. He's a regular on, on Trade Talk TV. It's great to have you back in the office. And today we're going to talk about innovation and customization in retail media. And James is coming in today to talk about how Kevin works with some of his clients around their sort of ad platform and retail media. So James, let's talk a bit about this. So you work with a lot of different retailers. And it's interesting, you see these native platforms sort of are very different on different uh, sites. So it's almost like you kind of have to optimize towards the sort of like buying psychology of, uh, of, the, of the customer on the site. Like, you know, a hardware will have a different buying psychology versus someone who's going to Tesco's. I want to talk about how you sort of work with some of the clients uh, and how you build your platform around that. So let's talk a bit, a bit about that, the innovation element of it. Yeah, absolutely. So I think it, it's good to kind of go back and think about the context of like where we got here yeah. in retail media yeah. and kind of how, you know, we went from, you know, retail was like a new thing with like your, you know, Amazon or eBay to suddenly everybody has a retail media network. <laughs> everybody right? like has every, one. Like, like hotels have retail media networks. Yes, network. yes. Uh, but they're all, they all kind of signed up with the same couple of vendors. Mm -hmm. So we just went from nothing to this kind of Cambrian explosion of cookie cutter retail media. Yeah. And so suddenly everybody has a off the shelf standard retail media. It's got some promoted listings. It's got some banner ads that we call native. Yeah. And like, can we, that's can we, it, can we right? draw like, like what, what a, cookie cut, a, a cookie cutter sort of uh, platform looks like, because it's important for people to realize here, a lot of the retailers are, they like advertising revenue, but they're more interested in actual sales on their site. So let's talk about why these cookie cutter platform, what they look like and why they don't quite fit the model of retail media. Yeah, I mean, even if we just if we just look at a simple, you know, e-commerce site, right? Like you're, you're searching for something and then what is what does every one of them look like? You have, you know, you have all your product, you know, product listing things returned, right? Yeah. All your little pictures of ketchup or- Yeah, or and your price. John and your your motors and yeah. your price. And then, you know, the really basic networks, you know, they'll stick a, a good old banner ad up there, right? Like a banner ad that we were serving in 97, right? And then and then a couple of these will get like a little promoted, you know, listing. And I think there's a couple of key things. Like one, that's standard. That's mm -hmm. what everybody can do, mm -hmm. right? One, this is not a high impact ad unit, right? Like users have learned to block out a standard banner, banner like yeah. forever. And then two, I think the other important thing is what's the relevancy for these product listings. And I think you notice this if you go to some of these really just, you know, cookie cutter retail media networks that these aren't even that relevant or that close to what you're searching for. Right. They're like, like they're not relevant to the product on the page, so the user experience is sort of like, you know, downgraded effectively. Yeah, and then sometimes you'll even have like this will be promoted and this will be the same thing. Like this will be like a yeah. bottle of ketchup and then this is a promoted bottle of yeah. ketchup and they're the same exact Heinz ketchup. Yeah. And yeah. and so there's a lot of that kind of, you know, really just inefficiency, but also bad user experience. Yeah. And like, what do we, what do retailers care most about? Selling stuff. Selling stuff. Yeah. And so if you're, if you're hurting that with these like not very relevant promoted listings and kind of crappy banner ads, you know, you're, you're not only leaving money on the table, but you're also potentially hurting your core business. So you're saying, <clears throat> it's interesting to, because we, we've heard uh, some sort of like criticisms about scale in, in retail media. That standardization was important. Like, I mean, are you going against the grain here, where there's a standardization ads across all these to make to make it more scalable? Or like, what's what's the thinking from from a Kevl perspective? Yeah, I mean, I think the thing is, some stuff can be standardized. Like, we talk about the, you know, promoted listings are a pretty standard idea of a unit. But yeah. the question is, who's deciding the relevancy? Where is that data coming from? Yeah. How is first party data being used to target it? Yeah. How is this unit instead of, you know, instead of a traditional banner ad, how is it, you know, what you'll see Amazon do now is, you know, there'll be a video here, you know, of like a dog running through a stream, right? And then there'll be like some real product listings here. And these are driven by, you know, first party data and relevancy. And like that there instead of a banner ad mm. makes a huge difference for both the user because now you're, you know, you're equating something that's great for the brand because the brand is like, when we think of our dog food, we want you to think of dogs, this dog running through right. a, you know, running through a stream right. and then the relevancy of it. Right. And so like, we know like, Hey, if you're, if you're going to Tesco and you're looking at dog food, 
Tesco knows how often you buy dog food. They probably know what type of dog you have, how many dogs you have, what type of dog food you have, yeah. you know, what kind of dog food you normally buy. Yeah. Like they can make this really relevant to you. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the question, but the problem is like the, a lot of the platforms that people have built these cookie cutter, uh, you know, retail media networks on, you can't really get to this. Are you, like, think, are you saying that sort of like, you're taking an old school mentality of sort of like, and shoehorning it into into a new environment, right? Like we, we, we kind of built this around open web publishers, you know, like sort of your typical sort of news publishers, et cetera. But this is a whole new sort of landscape that requires a, a different sort of approach in terms of monetization. Yeah, I think exactly. And and also I think the, the value of first party data in retail is so much stronger mm. than it ever was on, you know, publishers. Yeah, yeah. Right, because how many times did you go to Daily Mail or whatever and you never even, log in, right? You wouldn't log into it, but you end up there and maybe you read something, but the yeah. first party data is very light compared to Tesco that yeah. literally knows everything you bought for the last 10 well, years. We're talking about right? funnel, basically. You could argue that, you know, the Daily Mail is top of the funnel, even though it's, it seems like an oxymoronic thing to say, but like <laughs> top of the funnel. So you can basically do display ads to bring you down the funnel, but we are sort of mid to low funnel here. This is yeah. sort of like where you need to kind of like have first party data and, uh, and be able to activate it. I, I do want to kind of uh, sort of labor this point a little bit, right? Um, Kevin's position in this, you, 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 you're kind of position yourself as a, as a platform rather than an ad network. So in terms of sort of like the, um, the companies that you're talking about, we won't name them on camera, but people will be able to guess them. You know, some are French and some are not. So, so um, is this sort of like a church and state thing where Kevin is a platform and you you can use first party data and not be using it elsewhere because it's it's just it's the it's the customers rather than being mixed and match across you know the entire network yeah i think that's the key difference with kevl is that we're saying like we we are a platform that the retailers can use to innovate yeah and they can bring in their first party data we're a data processor we're not going to use that data to run ads somewhere else yeah. or to build our own machine learning models you know we we focus on you know enabling that customer to yeah. innovate yeah. And so they can bring in their first party data. They can even bring their own machine learning models. Yeah. Like yeah. BYO ML. Yeah, explain right? like, that. What do you mean? Like how how do they do that in terms of what would you guys? Yeah, so essentially we we instead of our relevancy being driven by just our own, like we do have a machine learning model we can use to drive relevancy. Yeah. But we have some of our customers who have huge data science teams. Right. They have a ton of data and a huge data science team. So they can come to us and say, We're we want to plug in our machine learning. We want to plug in our model and use that to power this relevancy. So right. instead of getting, you know, like if you go search for dog food on Tesco, instead of them showing you, you know, the, like some irrelevant dog food you'd never buy, they're showing you what, you know, this brand really wants to get you as a first time customer. Yeah. Right, like they, and, and so like they know that based on all their data. Do you think that they're, cause like this sort of kind of flies in the face of the last trailer talk we had around the sort of like the opportunity of programmatic retail media and the scalability. Do you believe this? Like they, they can work in tandem, right? You have, for instance, I think one of your clients is a, is a very large hardware um, um, uh, provider, and they have their own sales team and et cetera, et cetera. But do you think there's like two parallel tracks, right? There is one which is your sort of like custom and native ads, if you will, because your APIs help you build native advertising, which are, feels like the site, you know, part of the site, the the DNA of the site. That's part of high CPMs you know, custom stuff. And then there's your programmatic, which is sort of like the, the basically the demand from, from, from trade desk agencies, brands that are building a customizable product listing advertising across, the, across these sites. So you think those two work in tandem? And let's explore yeah, yeah. How, how they can work together. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, I think, I think it's similar to what we saw in kind of traditional advertising, yes. right? You yes. would have the, you'd have the part that's the more commoditized, this is, broad and then you'd have the part that was a direct sales and very bespoke yeah but i also think further like when we talk about the programmatic piece like if we can buy these programmatically we don't want to give up we don't want to give up relevancy in a first party data no. and so like the way we've designed the the spec with the iab is that the retailer is sending out the list of SKUs. Which is what we talked about. I think you're yeah, right. Yeah, we talked about that last time. And so like these SKUs can be driven by the relevancy in first party data. Mm, mm. And so even though, so it's really more about optimizing how it's bought yeah. and enabling, you know, enabling Procter & Gamble to go to one place so you and think say, that I want to sell diapers. You still but, think the programmatic angle needs to have that level of relevancy. Like the signal that you send out, particularly around the SKU, improves the user experience. Because I, I tend to agree, I've saw some ads on, on a, 
on a slate. And I go, what? What is this? It, it, to be honest, from a personal point of view, it just cheapens the yeah. experience, right? That I'm seeing this non-relevant ad and going, what is this? Like some, you know, third-rate marketplace, like so. You know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I think it's like, so I think the programmatic piece has to maintain that same relevancy, focus on first party data, yeah. but then just make it easier to buy them, yeah. right? And easier to buy them across like a large number of these. Yeah. I think especially as you get to like the, you know, if we start to talk about like all the like quick commerce companies and things like quick that. Quick commerce like, co companies? Like Deliveroo that? or Flink oh, right, or like, yeah, you know, yeah. these kind of groups, it's like, like this kind of programmatic angle is a perfect approach to say, I, I want to sell diapers. I, I genuinely because, think they know. are going to make a fortune. If, if we could get that right, I think that programmatic thing could be huge, especially with just the apps you talked about, delivery and Uber and all, all the sort of, um, sort of uh, type of apps. Um, can I just talk about sort of um, what, how your clients use you? Just, just reflecting this. How would a typical client then use a Kevl, right? So, like, obviously, they've probably done the cookie cut and stuff going, right, this isn't working. I'm, I'm actually losing sales or increasing sales. But how do you, how do they come to you and work with you? And what's the sort of angles for, yeah. for you to, to work? Because you work with some really interesting companies. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, yeah, I mean, essentially, the way, the way to think of us, right, is that we are the, we're the layer down here that is essentially all the APIs. So we wrap everything up in our APIs and we basically have, you know, the best retail media ad server. We have things like, my writing's terrible today, yeah. uh, forecasting, you know, we have things like our kind of audience, which is for first party data, you know, we have self-serve. So we have kind of all these different components wrapped up that they can build on top of. And I think the big difference in thinking about us is like that is, they are building on these APIs and innovating themselves, their, themselves right. versus saying we're just going to like, you know, basically like the old days, drop ad tags on the page and wait for a check to come in the mail. Yeah. Um, but I think the, the key thing when customers come to us, it's usually because they're hearing from brands, right? Their brands are going to them and saying, I don't like this. we don't want to buy this. Yeah. We don't want to buy this stuff. Like we can get this anywhere. What yeah. we really want from you is something like this, like yeah. this innovative video format. Yeah. Or what we want to do is we want you to tell us, hey, you know, these people buy dog food from Tesco and they're always buying Purina. Yeah. But we want to, we want them to buy this instead. We right. don't want people that already buy our product. Yeah. Right. Kind of incrementality. They don't want to keep advertising to somebody that already buys it. Yeah. How do you find those new to brand yeah. users? Do you and have to have a level of sophistication to be a Cavill customer? Like, I mean, do, do you feel that, you know, it's, it's an interesting. So your trajectory, you kind of, you're maturing as a, as a, as a business with the actual category that you, your service. Yeah. yeah. So do you think that these are these are companies that need to be big enough and have direct sales uh, teams, or what, what? What way do you work with clients, and what way do you sort of like? Okay, I can work with them because, like, obviously, if someone comes to you and they're not ready, you're not going to work with them, right? Because yeah, yeah. because that's going to be a lot of time and effort for both parties. Yep. No, I think that for us, we see the the people we work with are the ones who are investing in retail. Right. And so it's really so it's, they that's their core business basically. Yeah, well, they're, I mean, like the, I mean, their core business is selling the goods, yeah. right? But then they then they really see the opportunity in, in retail media, yeah, and they're willing to invest in it, yeah. Like it's hilarious. In the last couple of weeks, I was in meetings where you know we went around the room and everybody introduced themselves, and it's a meeting of like thirteen people, and none of them been at the company for longer than nine months, right? Because that company went and hired went on a hiring spree to say, how do we go from you know fifty million in retail media to five hundred million in retail, media. right? And they're not going to do that just using a cookie cutter platform. No. They're going to invest and they're going to grow, and that those are our customers, the yeah. ones who see like and see they, the big opportunity. Do you, do, do you think that they need to be bringing some of their demand? So obviously, you know, the, the cookie cutters would say, "Well, we're bringing demand from you know our external existing customer base," but it feels to me that you know you're working with companies. That, so speaking of that company, I would say right, they have a fairly big sales team, and they're going directly to brands. Going, yeah, yeah. you need to spend more money, and they're sort of like you know upsell, you know, digital shelf space, etc. So the, the do those companies that you work with need to have that kind of framework in place? Yeah, absolutely. And I think those, are, and what we're seeing is that more and more companies are making that jump. Right. And so, because because their competitors are doing it. Right. And so like if you're if you're a grocery store and your competitor is making five hundred million in retail media and you're making fifty, like that's really going to hurt you in the long run. Yeah. Like yeah. it's going to impact your core business yeah. because now they have all this additional margin. They can cut prices lower. Yeah. They can they can spend more on the other side of marketing, right? And so yeah. it's really like it's a risk to the core business if they aren't, you know, being aggressive in retail media. Yeah. 
Um, is this mostly US or are you seeing this in Europe as well? Like, I mean, you have customers here, a lot of customers. Absolutely, yeah. Well, I mean, we see it like even almost even more in Europe. Right. Uh, because I think in, uh, especially in how the markets work here, you know, if you're the number one yeah, in a given a market. Brand leader, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so like we work with Sonai, who's like kind of Continente and things like that in Portugal. They're mm -hmm. like the number one in Portugal. And yeah. so Unilever and Procter & Gamble they are going to go to them. Because they want to be seen, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. yeah. Uh, just on a, a, on a macro question, where is the retail uh, sort of uh, spend increasing from brands? Is it? You know, what are you seeing from you, from you on the ground? Like because like you hear of numbers, sometimes a lot of that numbers is sort of allocated to Amazon. But like someone who's sort of at, at the coal face, what are you seeing from that macro trend? Is that is the money is the pot growing? Where is it coming from? I, I'm, I'm curious. Yeah, no, it's absolutely growing because I think the initial the initial was kind of like the trade dollars kind of moving to retail media. Yes. But now you're starting to see, you know, agencies and brands are are trying to figure out how do we spend even more here because it's addressable because it's, you know, you can actually see the conversion, it's low funnel. And so I think we're we're, we're only seeing spend go up. Right. And where is it coming from do you think? Is it coming from like the big wall gardens? I mean, do you think those those same brands will start pulling money out from from, you know, your typical sort of performance in, on Facebook and Google and say well, look, I'm not spending more money in Pmax. I'd rather spend money in this. Yeah, I mean, I think some of it is probably coming from there. Probably not, but it's probably also coming from more traditional stuff. Of yeah. Just the, the, you know, pulling more from TV. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, whatever they were still spending on print or, yeah. or other random stuff. Yeah. Uh, but also, too, it's, sometimes it's just net new spend. Yeah. Because if they can attribute, you know, a 4X ROAS, they're going to get more budget for that. Yeah. Uh, just looking, just... Last question, really, about the programmatic stuff because I, I always kind of have to go back to that. But how are we how are we looking in terms of sort of the open protocol? Um, are we making progress? Are we going to see like a, a, a big chunk of spend heading into that? Into yeah. That so era? we so we just with the I think with the IAB we just took we just took the standard that we've been working with them on. Yeah. And that's gone to the Open RTB working group. Right. And so now it's kind of in that stage. Right. And so we're we're pretty close. So we have like a draft we can actually start doing some development on that draft. Right. So we've done that. We're kind of trying to get ahead of it. Uh, and so we're probably, you know, a couple months away from having something that we can start to really build on. Exciting. And so like, you know, our hope is by the end of the year, we're doing a good amount of, of revenue kind of through programmatic sponsored listings. Okay. Look forward to seeing that. Yeah. Uh, James, thanks for that. Um, interesting to get sort of like a deep dive on the retail media space, because we just hear lots of high level stuff, but having a, an actual practitioner in here who's at the coal face is great to have you in it. And I always will have you back on the Trader Talk at any time. Um, uh, thanks for coming in again. Absolutely, thanks for having me. And that was Trader Talk TV, and we will see you next time.